Hello, I am Lobo Starcraft. I'm just going to show you a Zerg vs Zerg build known as the 1414 or Speedling Expand. And this is a recording that I did of me just doing the opening build order against an AI so that they don't interfere. And the build is a very, it's a very good build. Um, it's it provides you with a good army, um, good economy, or well, decent economy, and good tech. So you get lots of gas units, etc. Yes. And all you do, all you do in this build is you build a 14 gas, then a 14 pool, and what that's going to do is allow you to build, um, or train, start, research, research, that's the one, metabolic boost, as soon as the pool's finished. And I'm, well, just going to show you all like the little fine details which make the build fit together much more nicely so that you keep your minerals lie, low, low, and your army is big as possible. So okay, so 14 then 14. So as soon as that gas comes down, we put those um, drones in. Um, I sent, send my first overlord to scout the opponents, just as the classic Zerg way. Um, my second overlord to check for proxies and cannons. And we need to check for proxies and cannons because when we take a late base like this, and um, they can be quite a nuisance to deal with because um, things on their own often struggle to deal with cannons when, they're, especially when they're walled off nicely. So I'm getting my Overlord on 16, and we do it on 16 so that we have two supply spare to be build a queen. Um, taking guys out of gas when I have 100. I want to save all the minerals I can so that I can get an expansion slightly earlier. So my um, queen pops, um, my my Overlord pops, and I start a queen. And I also queue up one more drone because I'm going to expand and it's going to replace the drone that I used to um, expand with because we need to keep um, um, our, our drones at 16 on the minerals because 16 is the optimum number because it's two drones mining per patch and the first two mine more proficiently than the third because there's less moving around and such. So uh, my scouting overlord found the AI, the AI so um, usually you have to sort of react accordingly to what you see, you see if they're doing a 6 for you obviously not going to move out, you want to defend, maybe get a spine but um, yeah in this case you can't really react to anything because they just they don't know what they're doing because it's an AI so um, after I start up the hatchery replace the drone then we make a set of some sets of things and um, we also want to get an, an overlord around 21 or 22 supply so that when the overlord pops, um, we oh, when the um, the extra lava pops off from the lava inject, we have the supply to support more things. And also, when we have the money, we want to um, queue up a second queen so that we can transfer it down to our natural when that finishes. Okay, so now our speed's finished, our massive luck boost, and then we're going to move out straight away, maybe just beforehand, so that we're so we're close to our opponent's base when the speed kicks in. And then we're going to harass, so obviously we're not going to usually kill our opponent with this. It's going to just um, see what your opponent's up to, maybe kill a hatchery if you're lucky. Kill the, kill the expansion hatchery. But um, obviously it's an AI, so they're just going to die and, and leave. But um, other things to note. Um, that ha that queen that pops off that we're going to transfer, making a creep tomb with that's very useful. I'll just pause the video here. Making a creep zoom with that is very useful so that you can connect your hatcheries. And um, obviously connecting hatcheries with creep is very useful if you want to transition to um, roaches. Which transitions nicely onto um, me saying that you can transition <laughs> any way out of this build. So you can, um, you, if you want, you can just not build any more drones. You can floodlings and try and all in, but I prefer not to do that. What I much prefer to do is what you've seen in this video. I've put the guys back into gas, maybe start a second gas. And then with just one or two gas geysers, um, you can start one or two evolution chambers. I like doing two because that's just me. But if you're sticking on things, upgrades are very, very useful. Uh, that's, a lot, that's a really nice transition out of this. Also, what you want to do is you want to save up um, 100 gas for getting a, a, a lair, maybe about seven or eight minutes. And um, also a very nice transition out of this is going straight for mutalisks. Um, if you want to be you want to be careful if your opponent wants to counter push, so get the spines where necessary. You might want to um, deviate your build to get banelings in case your opponent goes for a 
big mass link push. So yes, I'm going to move on to a another video of me playing this in a team game because that's just where I play this build because I like to off race um, as random when I play team games for fun to give me a tap. I said this, I said this lots of times <laughs> in my career, but um, um, yeah. But don't worry. I pick one where I'm against lots of Zerg players and I transition like I was against Zerg so this should be nice and helpful even though this is a Zerg vs Zerg build. So hello welcome to my game of choosing and here it is this is a 4v4 and I announce what's the first thing anyone says I, I announce immediately that I'm going 14-14 so I build my 14 gas and then my 14 pull oh dear me so let's have a look at our opponents. We have we're against two Zergs, and I attack this here Zerg, and he attacks me, which is why um, I have picked this this game. And also, there amongst my team there are three Zergs, so it's a very Zerg heavy game. It's five out of the eight players. So I'm getting my pull down. Oh, I, I I did just watch this. Just got a note. Did make a little mistake. I forgot to put the second queen in my base. I built it down here. Very unfortunate, never mind. But yeah. So I start my pool and my queen. Getting my expansion down straight away on 16 supply. Then I'm going to start adding on zerglings. There they go. And I'm going to get that inject. inject. And because I don't start my queen, my minerals are going to skyrocket and I'm not going <laughs> to. Somehow I didn't realise why they were high. Oh dear. Anyway. So my opponent's doing an expand build as well. He's doing he's doing us some sort of speed. He's doing, probably doing the same sort of thing as I am. So my allies are attacking and such. So I'm getting my lings, getting my lings, getting my lings. That they come, and pulls and speed's just finished. And then I put pressure on this here base. And this is this is why I chose this game. This is what the 14-14 should be doing. It should be denying these bases. And that's my overlord scouting out that you did have indeed did indeed have a base. And I cancel that base. There we go. Oh, I actually killed it, didn't I? And I run on out. So in this. In this occurrence, um, he lost his base because he was defending his ally while while I was denying his base. But often, in Zerg vs Zerg, um, your opponent might not have as n enough units to defend. For example, if they weren't, they weren't going for a fast speed build. Though to be fair, fast speed builds are very common. So then he did a counter attack. I lost a few drones and a queen, which is unfortunate, but I kept my base, so my lava, lava's production is better than his, so I do get an advantage. So my reasoning here is that because he's down on bases to me, and I'm going to be playing defensively with a better economy, I decided to go for roaches, uh, but so I've added on roach tech here, got two gas going, but he put on so much pressure I couldn't, I didn't have an uh, opportunity to build roaches because I just need lings, which train much faster. And I have those to defend, so I keep should be on top of these injects, man. Oh no! Come on, there we go. That's good. So, yep. Defending, so using the, these choke points here is is very useful. Very, very useful. Takes away the advantage of um, having a larger army. Of him having a larger army. Yeah. So my my economy isn't looking too good because I've been under so much pressure. But I've had these gas guys going the whole time, so I have an advantage in that respect, and I have rope just coming, which is really nice. So after I was under all this pressure, the, uh, a time to get lair didn't really occur. But once you get to a certain point, you really need to start it anyway. I was up to about nine minutes. It's getting a bit late to start the lair, so I, should, I just started, even though it wasn't a very nice situation. I wasn't wasn't in a very nice situation. So. Oh, this isn't looking nice. I think his his allies helping him out here. It's, much, it's getting a bit sticky. But the roaches come in and save the day. And roaches are an invaluable defensive tool. Slow roaches. And when your opponent's going lings, if you have enough of them, they they are they're just very very useful defensively because you can get them in chokes. You can get them between mineral fields, and they can they can save you. It can be very cost effective use of gas. So now my that's finished, I'm starting roach speed. Once speed finishes, roaches become an very good aggressively. So roach is about to finish, so I'm gonna move out. It's quite a small amount of roaches. 
normal in the Zerg versus Zerg, I, I thought there'd be more roaches, but this has just been so absurdly aggressive. Oh, my allies are doing some sort of mass DT push, wow. I, I mean, I am actually playing a master level game, I think. So I'm, I was, I've, I've been in masters for 4v4 for ages, so I can imagine this would be masters as well. So, yeah. Large amount of roaches, they just build up, they don't die because they, they have a high HP. They're very good. And that's the game! Um, yeah! So you can see uh, my thought, my logic in this game, you can see how I've reacted to what my opponent's doing. Um, roaches didn't pay, pay off attacking for them too quickly because my opponent did a, did a huge ling push. Looking back at that, I'd probably set to roaches later. but. There we go. So the things to take away from this is always tech to layer like eight or nine minutes. Even if your friends, un if your friends, even putting loads of pressure on you, you should really tech to layer about nine minutes or something because you don't know. Especially in the team game as well, because one of the players might be going for um, Dark Templar or something. You really need um, overseers up, and also um, the tech, um, their tech's useful for broach speed, getting two two. So I haven't even started one one yet because it, that was so aggressive. Wait a minute, the video's not over, and that's because I'm just going to show you one more game which I played soon after that, the last one I showed you, uh, because I don't think that demonstrated everything as well as I as it could have, because um, what's going to happen in this game is far more common. So I'm just going to show you the opening and the transition, and then leave it there because this is going on too long. Let's go. So, so times eight speed. It, I'm showing this a bit. It doesn't matter because I'm not going to get that far anyway. So, right. Fourteen gas, fourteen pool. Mining one hundred gas. Taking them out just before you reach a hundred, so that you only mine that extra one hundred. And there we go. Exactly my one hundred mined. Got the gas coming. And once I reach sixteen, um, seventeen drones on minerals, expand. Here, it improves it down to 16, get a queen, then kill off another queen, then get an overlord, second queen, there we go, after two injects I move this one down, the queen, and then the queen swap places, we have one queen per base, then producing lots of lings after those first 17 drones, mass ling production, and I have quite a few here, I'm moving into this here opponent. And see he has lots of roaches, what on earth, especially at a low level this is going to be very common. Um, he's only on one base, because he's only on one base I can't really exploit anything. This would be the same if you went one base on lings or banelings or anything. It would be very difficult to do, do much damage on, when he's on one base because of, he could have spines and stuff, like he's getting a spine now. So I just checked that my other opponents haven't got bases. Uh, while this is going on, my opponent's harassing, but let's not look at him. And um, I come on home. So now I am on two bases to my opponent's one base, but he has a huge army and a tech advantage. So, to account for this, I'm going to have to build lots of spine crawlers. And luckily my opponent's already done that, but I'm going to add my own, my own ones on. Just to demonstrate just to demonstrate that this is what you'd have to do in a, in a Zerg versus Zerg. I would have to build them right next to my expansion, probably, or near the choke, to, the choke point to my, to my expansion. And then the roaches come up, so when the roaches come in, um, you want to wait until they're in range of these spine crawlers, and then you want to surround them with the zerglings to keep them in place. Um, that wasn't good, I'm gonna run away. I was just actually I was just trying to defend that that creep tomb, but, that, but it didn't work, whatever. Um, and there we go, so he's just in range, and I'm gonna get use, use my lings as a, like a little meat shield there to, to keep him pinned back. And then they re and then he retreats away, which is great for us because I didn't have much else. So now the transition after this is to roaches. So as soon as I saw those roaches, I actually threw the stand. Didn't want to make them straight away because spines were a bit more important. Because if I made roaches, it would just I just have an inferior roach army to him and die. So I want to wait a little while, get those get the defenses up first, and then with my superior economy, I'm gonna be producing lots of roaches. So he's breaking down the back rocks. Always annoying when there's three players because you can't control your allies, obviously. <laughs> and this is another reason why I, I wish I played Zerg and then I get some better examples, but I did like this example. I liked I liked the roaches and things and this massive spine crawl of raw wall, which is a lot of fun. So they're moving in. I'm knocking down these rocks because why not? I don't like these rocks being there, it's just like it gets in the way when I'm trying to defend. So I got those rocks down. And I can get us around on him. 
hopefully. I have quite a lot of links. Units, I have... Oh god, this is so much... So much stuff. I have like 29 links, I think. And... Oh, and... Yeah, that wasn't a very good surround there. That was, that was way too much. What I'm trying to do here is... This is, this won't happen, obviously, in a Cyclist is there. What I'm doing here is I'm just sacrificing things to, to keep them in place so that these um, mines do, do all the damage that they need to do. So he got himself trapped in this corner. It was intentional so I couldn't get the surface area, but I mean, we, 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 it was too many links and he lost a majority of his units there. Now I'm producing my roaches. I'm starting 1 1. That's probably a good thing to do. Just as you start producing that first wave, start 1 1. It's good. Um, Soon after you want to be throwing down Lair, I should have that by now really. I would usually recommend getting Lair a couple minutes ago. But this was a bit aggressive. My opponent opened one base and he still hasn't got that one base and I see that he hasn't, I mean, he still hasn't got that expansion. And I can see with this Overlord which I've got scouting. And my Roaches are overwhelming his and a superior number of bases to, to them. They're not expanding, they're going one base all in. So yes. Yes, this is, this, is, this is just, I'm showing you this video to account for the, um, to show you an example in the very likely possibility that your opponent doesn't expand. Yeah, I said that really badly, but who cares. Um, and yeah, I think that's showing pretty much it, so I'm getting that layer in, and when these two, when these one, one, one finishes, I'm going to get 2-2 two, two and speed very nicely. Um, as soon as I see that they might be starting to produce air units or something, which hydras would be very useful against, I'm going to produce throwing down a hydra den. Um, don't take a third until they've secured their, th their natural, so being two bases ahead is a bit of an overkill, really. Don't want to get too greedy. They might be, they might overwhelm you if you take three bases. Though the spine crawler wall is going to be very helpful. And three of those are mine. Two of those are mine. I didn't contribute much there. Disappointing. And yes, the counter attack with this many pushes, this many roaches off two bases is going to destroy the one basing roach player. Quite simply. And his ally is going to help out, but not before he loses most of his stuff. So yes, I hope you learnt something from that. Um, especially if you already used this build, which is very likely. I hope you learned something about the ways to you can do it. Um, otherwise, if you haven't seen this build before and you're and you're a beginner, this is very, I hope this helped a lot. It's going to be a very useful build. It's going to get you to at least diamonds very quickly because it's a very strong build. Um, I'll see you see you later. I might probably make another one of these. Um, probably for Protoss though. Um, see you later.